Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to Underworld Team Development. So we've looked at starting rosters for all the teams in Blood Bowl 2020 and we've looked at tournament rosters as well. Now what we're doing is we're going through each of the teams, looking at each of the positionals and kind of finding out what skills go well when. So the idea is it kind of gives you an idea of what skills you're going to want to put on your guys when it comes to your league and today we are looking at Underworld. First up, we got a new positional for the Underworld team in Blood Bowl 2020, the Mutant Rat Ogre. So they still have the troll, don't worry, but you can only take one or the other. So it gives you a bit of um, a bit of choice, really. You've got the troll to be your blocker, or you've got your, under, your, your Rat Ogre to be your kind of frenzy big guy blitzer. Kind of blitzer number two works really well, I think. Uh, so Mutant Rat Ogre, 150,000, movement six, strength five, agility four plus, uh, passing nothing, nine plus armor, animal savagery, frenzy, loner four plus, mighty blow plus one, prehensile tail, and strength and mutation on a, on a normal. So this guy has animal savagery. That's not wild animal anymore this is animal savagery which is the one where basically it works kind of like wild animal but if it goes wrong it's gonna eat a local player um so uh, when this player is activated even if they are prone or have lost their tackle zones immediately after declaring the action they will perform but before they do it uh, roll a d6 applying plus two modifier to the die roll if uh, it's a block or a blitz action basically on a one to three um, it lashes out at a teammate. One standing teammate of your choice that is currently adjacent to this player is immediately knocked down by this player. This does not cause a turnover. Basically, it knocks down and rolls armor against a friendly player. If there's no friendly player there, it loses its tackle zone and essentially boneheads for the turn. So on one hand, you risk boneheading, but if there is a guy next to him, you will never fail your action. So if you're going to use the Rat Ogre as Blitzer number two, you can never fail as long as you've got someone next door. Which is fine now, because you can take Snotlings on the Underworld team who have the swarming skill. So you kind of get to sneak on one or two Snotlings extra every single drive, as long as they're not all dead. Um, and you can just use one to buddy up with the Rat Ogre. It's going to protect him from uh, kind of gang blocks, but also it means your Rat Ogre is always going to do what it wants to do. It is going to cost you Snotlings. Anyway, let's say you've managed to level up your Rat Ogre. What skills are you looking at? So, if you're going to use them on the line, Brawler is the skill that you want that's cheap when it comes to having strength access. If you're going to use him to blitz, now bear in mind this guy's got frenzy so either of these is going to work out well for you. Juggernaut is going to be useful because it's going to turn those both downs into pushes. They actually combo uh, in no way at all. So you only really want either the Brawler to do the blocking or the Juggernaut to do the blitzing. But you can take that on a general skill. Guard is going to be fantastically useful for this Rat Ogre when you deploy him on the line. So if you're going with the Brawler route, then Guard is going to be a fantastic buddy skill for that. Or if you go with Guard first, then Brawler is going to be a good buddy skill for that because then he becomes a big guy blocker. If you're going to use him as a big guy blitzer, then Juggernaut and Break Tackle combo brilliantly because this guy is Agility 4+, which means it's a 2-plus roll to uh, dodge out when you've got break tackle and juggernaut on the blitz is going to mean that it turns that into pushes and when you've got frenzy pushes mean more blocks so that's pretty decent horns slash claw for the rat ogre if he is going to be a blitzer but it really depends on the the makeup of your league if you've got a lot of big guys in there then horns are going to be useful for the rat ogre to do the blitzing and blitz at strength six he becomes kind of like a, a poor man's minotaur at that point claw if you're just going to be on the line brawlering all day uh, is going to give you a better chance at claw mighty blowing stuff away remember that doesn't combo the same way it does anymore uh, you claw the armor then you mighty blow the injury but quite frankly that's still not bad odds stand firm is going to be a useful skill for you with the rat ogre to protect you against frenzy uh, <laughs> frenzying yourself into a terrible position the other skill there is if you're going to use them on the line you can go for multiple block but it will uh, take away your frenzy advantage so it, it, it's not a bad idea 
If you want to save up all the way, Block is obviously the king of all skills when it comes to the Rat Ogre, and the sidestep does a great job of replacing Stand Firm because it just gets to circle him around stuff. Stat-wise, wouldn't worry too much about the Rat Ogre. Uh, movement 6 is already really good. Strength 5 is already really good. So actually, the Rat Ogre is in a pretty good spot when it comes to stats. If you want to take a random, you can do so on 3 SPP. Let's have a quick look. Um, I don't think it's the best with this guy. Armbar. When you've got Prehensile Tail, Armbar, which basically if they try and move away and fail and stack it, you get plus one to armor. With Prehensile Tail, it's actually a really good combination. Brawler is going to be useful if you want to use him on the line. Break Tackle is going to be useful for Blitzing. Grab is going to be useful if you want him on the line. Although can't take Grab because he's got... Um, Jobby what's it because he's got frenzy um, guard is going to be useful juggernaut's going to be useful mighty blow plus one he's got multiple block is going to be useful pile driver is not going to be useful or at least it is going to be useful but it's not really what you want to be doing you don't really want to be fouling although this team does get half price bribes i think let's just check that one bribery and corruption might be right uh, stand firm is going to help you strong arm will be a reroll and thick skull is going to be okay so there's there's not bad options there if you want to take a random with the Rat Ogre. But really, there's a whole bunch of options here and none of them are bad. Alternatively, you can take the Troll. So the Troll has been a staple of the Underworld team forever and Tentacles is kind of its jam. So the Underworld Troll performs the role of a catapult and of a blocker. So the Underworld Troll is going to end up on the front line. So skills that are going to help it on the front line is obviously block, but that is a long way off at 12 SPP. Brawler is a cheap man's at uh, version basically uh talked about it just a moment ago you're most likely going to be two die blocking with the troll when you do block so uh having uh, the opportunity to re-roll one dice that is a both down result is going to help you just just be more effective while blocking tentacles is the ultimate underworld troll skill basically it just ties other players up Guard is going to assist you in that as this guy's on the line. It's just going to make the two people you put next to it, which are most likely to be Skaven linemen, it's going to make them essentially strength four. That's going to massively help them. Strong arm will help you with your throw game as well. Later on, claw is going to be useful to get those incidental casualties, and arm bar is going to work well with tentacles. Basically, you're going to have to roll well to get away from your tentacles, and then they're going to have to roll well to dodge, or they're going down, and it's basically mighty blow on the ground. Block is obviously the ideal skill for this guy. Uh, strength 5 block is just fantastic. Pro will do well for your Underworld tro uh, Troll. So Pro now works on a 3 plus and it allows you to re-roll one dice of a dice pool. So if you're making a block, 3 plus, you get to re-roll one of those two skulls you just rolled. And it also will work against uh, failing really stupid as well. Way, way down the line, defensive is going to help turn off your opponent's guard sometimes. So the troll is there to give you the throw teammate option. Now you've got goblins and you've got snotlings on this team. So it's almost more important. It's really interesting choice to make between the troll and the rat ogre. Obviously, I'm a big rat ogre kind of guy, but the troll here being able to throw a bunch of stuff. Now you've got snotlings who are basically free. Um, the snotlings enable the troll's throw game and they enable the rat ogre to murder things. But you can either go combat with brawler tentacles with passive or guard to make the rest of your team better all right more juice here now we've got the skaven blitzer so you get naught to one skaven blitzers on the underworld team they come in at ninety thousand. Uh, movement seven strength three agility three plus passing five plus armor nine plus uh, animosity underworld goblin lineman and block so these guys have got animosity to just the goblins they don't mind snotlings just goblins they have issues with these guys get general, mutation, and strength on special. So these guys can be awesome. I say these guys because you used to be able to have two. Now it's just one. And what you do with him is entirely up to you. If you've got the Rat Ogre and you're blitzing with a Rat Ogre, you're kind of free to turn this guy into a ball carrier. Otherwise, he is going to be your removal piece. So horns is going to allow you to blitz at strength four if you're not going to be blitzing with the rat ogre you can be blitzing with this guy and if you do then just taking horns at six spp is going to mean your strength four on the blitz that is going to be useful for blitzing but it's also going to be useful for carrying the ball because if you can blitz out of a situation at strength four two die block with block push a guy away carry on with seven movement you're doing a good job if you're going the removal route then mighty blow is going to help you with that 
guard as you are one of this is one of the few players that actually has strength on a normal uh, skill up um, will be useful just to support the rest of your team two heads is going to give this guy essentially dodge two plus into the open that is going to be really useful if he's going after the ball carrier or if he is carrying the ball anyway Tackle and Frenzy will be useful depending on the makeup of your team and the makeup of your league. If it's stunty heavy, uh, dodgy heavy, then Tackle's going to do wonders for you. Doubles wise, uh, giving this guy dodge is going to be awesome as is sidestep. But really with the Blitzer, it depends on what you want to do with him. Two heads is going to be great. Horns is going to be great. Mighty Blow is going to be great. Guard is going to be great. Removal wise, I would probably say um, Horns because Horns is of those skills the most likely to be able to take out people because you're going to be able to strike exactly where you want to add a strength that you want to strike at but also it's going to be able to push somebody away essentially if you've got the ball. Uh, stat increases on a Skaven Blitzer is also not bad. Movement 8 is good, Strength 4 is very good but very 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 expensive. Agility 2 plus isn't bad either. There's some other skills you can take extra arms if you want him to be a ball carrier down the road. I wouldn't take a random uh, with the Skaven Blitzer. There's a lot of skills here that do good stuff, but he's going to be one of your primary scorers, so wait for that second touchdown, and then have a really good think about whether it's Mighty Blow or Horns. I recommend Horns to start, and then you can kind of see how the rest of the league and the rest of your team is shaping up. And coming in at 85,000, we've got a Skaven Thrower here. Again, one of these on your team. Movement 7, Strength 3, Agility 3+, plus, Passing 2+. plus. This guy is a throwing machine. Armor 8+, plus, Pass, Sure Hands, and Animosity to Goblins. So the Skaven Thrower here with Passing 2+, plus does stuff. This is You've got a legitimate thrower here. Movement 7 is fantastic. Sure Hands... Even on Agility 3 Plus is going to be really useful. And passing 2 Plus for a quick pass is awesome. So there's kind of a billion routes you can go with the thrower because all of these skills on the left-hand side are going to be useful. Block is going to give you a second Skaven Blitzer, but more importantly, it's going to protect him as your ball carrier because then you move in 7, you've got block. Blocks your hands, it's kind of hard to take the ball away from. Extra arms means you're going to be picking up the ball on a 2+. plus. Big hand means you are always going to pick the ball up on a 3+, plus with a reroll. That's going to be really useful if it's in enemy tackle zones. No surprise. Two heads is going to mean this guy is dodging around on a 2+, plus, which is going to help him get to the ball and get away with the ball. On the ball is going to give you a head start three squares every time somebody passes the ball on your opponent's side, but also on the kick. So basically on turn one, when you receive, this guy is movement 10. Leader is going to be really useful for your team as well. It's going to save you 140,000 gold pieces for your team in league. And then you've got Accurate to give you the cheeky 1 plus 2 plus pass option. And let me tell you, 6 squares is a very long way on the Blood Bowl pitch. That is the entire movement of many, many players. And being able to do that on a 2 plus with a reroll, admittedly not to Goblins, but to Skaven and to uh, Snotlings, gives him a really good option. It depends on how you want to run your team. If you want to be the most consistent you can, why are you running Underworld? But secondly, Block is probably the best way to do it. If you want to throw the ball, just go with accurate. You're going to have a great time. To brew up things for your team, you kind of got the block leader route. Block leader on the ball, those guys there. What he is then is a kind of game manager. He boosts your team up with leader. He's got block to just be a consistent piece. And on the ball is going to help save you half a turn. Uh, if you want to have some fun though, accurate is going to be really cool. And extra arms, big hand, two heads are all going to be really good. He's going to score some touchdowns. So you should be able to pick your first skill. After that, just go mad. <sighs> And the gutter runner is a prime candidate for that passing two plus at the thrower. So the Skaven gutter runner, you get one of them on this team and you really should be running one. 85,000, movement nine. Strength two, but agility two plus. Throwing four plus, armor eight plus. Dodge, animosity to goblins. Rats don't like goblins. Uh, AGM on normal and passing and strength on a double. This guy gets everything. And the gutter runner? Gonna be scoring some touchdowns for you here, guys. So, the no brainer skill for a Galarana is block because movement 9, agility 2 plus blodger is very well protected from being hurt, but also gives you a very decent opportunity at a stretch kind of punch. Um, we've got here an alternative build, which is the Wrestle Dauntless Horns version, if you want to use them as a ball sacker. You get one gutter on this team. 
and he will be very well rewarded for using him to score touchdowns because the gutter runner is a very difficult to stop piece especially when you've got a sweet passing two plus thrower to get him the ball but having agility two plus and the opportunity to create a rule sacker is actually quite useful i like on skaven but you get four gutter runners you've got three other guys who you can just build to score touchdowns if you want to go that route wrestle dauntless horns these three skills are great for you however block is going to increase your consistency extra arms is going to mean you're catching the ball or picking it up on a one plus two heads means you are dodging around on a one plus with a reroll. monstrous mouth is a cool skill you've got access to in blood bowl 2020 it's catch with the protection of sure hands so if you're going to be using your gutter runner to carry the ball monstrous mouth is just strictly better catch because they cannot strip ball you if it's inside you sidestep is also a brilliant skill for a gutter runner now you've got access to doubles and because of how many touchdowns the gutter runner is going to be scoring you're going to be able to afford them as well nerves of steel means you are catching on a two plus forever with the exception of disturbing presence guard is also something you can pick up and if you need a guard assist actually spending 14 uh, spp to get guard on a second skill once you've already got block means your gutter runner is going to be scoring it's got an opportunity to punch out and it's going to be a really good assist on defense because then your gutter runner with nine movement is going to be able to position that guard exactly where you want it and your blitzer or your roger or your block thrower is going to be able to be in a position to take a two die block exactly where it wants to be You've also got the opportunities for some cheeky goblin shenanigans as well. So actually having a guard piece is going to assist your goblins. And uh, you're probably going to end up with one with horns. So a guard piece plus a horns goblin blitzing is a strength four block. Gutter runners are amazing. These skills are all great. It sounds boring, but block is just going to enable the gutter runner. Uh, then you can just go to absolute town with a mutations. Okay, we've got three clan rats, not to three Skaven clan rats, 50,000, movement seven, strength three, agility three plus, passing four plus, armor nine plus, no skills, animosity to goblins, general and mutation. So these are your, they're weird. This is a weird team. Your goblins are technically your linemen, and that means that Skaven linemen get to become semi-positionals. They are just kind of junior positionals. These guys can go anywhere you want to go. So we'll first, we'll start off with this option. One of them scores a touchdown. You take a random skill. And why do you take a random skill? Because then you kind of get a new positional. General skill, block, you've got another blitzer. Dauntless, you've got a, a slayer. Dirty player, you've got a fowler. Not great on this team given the amount of goblins, but actually DP is going to be really useful. Fend, you've got someone to put on the line on the side of a cage to just keep your opponent away. Frenzy, you've got a slayer. Kick, you've got to help your team out massively. Pro, you've just got a really effective Skaven. Shadowing isn't terrible on movement 7. It's not ideal, but it will come in handy sometimes and it will be annoying. Strip ball, you've got the makings of a sacking player here. Uh, sure hands, you've got a second ball carrier immediately tackle you've got another safety wrestle you've got another safety basically take a random skill on each of these skaven clan rats and it will tell you where it wants to go take a general and then you can save up and pick mutations that go on top you get wrestle then you can look at horns get that sweet um two die wrestle block and you're going to take somebody down and if you want to make sure that he's dodging around then you can look at extra heads if you get sure arms uh, sure hands then you can pick up extra arms then you're picking up on a two plus with a reroll or big hand and just three plus it forever these guys are blank and all they're going to end up being is individual positionals they don't have the head start that the other guys do but Skaven Clamor with two skills is going to be its own kind of player. And that's so exciting about this team because you get all these skills to choose from. You can also contemplate taking a random mutation. Um, I wouldn't recommend it because you only get three of these guys. Take the random general, build the mutations and additional skills on top of that. Or save up and get guard. But Mutant Goblins is the reason you are running this team. These goblins are awesome awesome so they are just ordinary goblins with mutation access so they come in at forty thousand a piece and the movement six strength two agility three plus passing four plus armor eight plus dodge right stuff stunty and they get agility and mutations so what do you do with the goblin lineman you've got a ton of individual positioners you've got six skaven three already have roles three are going to discover roles you've got one big guy it's either a tentacly mess of a blocker or just a psychotic rat ogre okay 
great fun. That's the spirit of your team. And then you get a bunch of disposable playthings for warp stone. So you get a touchdown with the goblin. Game over. You've won. Congratulations. Take a random mutation, potentially. So random mutations for these goblins. They're going to open up so much for you. Big hand. Picking up a three plus forever. Claws. Amusing. There's a ton of cool stuff you can do here with mutations. Two heads is going to be great. Horns, extra arms, big hand. There's a ton of cool stuff. So you can go three SPP and take the random mutation. You're going to have a great time with that. Or you can save up to six and take a random general. So, and then again, just like we said with the Skaven Lyman, you start to build a character to this skate to this uh, to this goblin. If you save six SPP take a random roll on the uh, general table block dauntless dirty player fend frenzy kick pro shadowing strip ball sure hands tackle wrestle you develop a new player and it's only going to be 60k at that point then like we said you just brew it up to match now failing that if you've got 6 sp and you want to pick a skill then just go for two heads with a goblin just trust me, two heads with the goblin means he's dodging around on a 2 plus with stunty and dodge. That's 2 plus with a reroll everywhere that there isn't kind of weird prehensile tails and stuff. That's just awesome. Horns is also fantastically good on a goblin lineman because you are stunty 3 plus. That means you're going to be blitzing somebody at strength 3. You're going to have to take a 3 plus with a reroll to get in there and then you are one die blocking the majority of the world. Now we talked about getting guard on a couple of pieces. If you can sandwich guard against somebody and then blitz into a cage, you're in a good spot. So horns is going to be really beneficial. Goblin lineman with horns will do great stuff. Goblin lineman with two heads is going to be dodging everywhere on a 2 plus. Extra arms is quite useful but you've got somebody who can pick up the ball then on a 2 plus. Big hand is someone who's always going to pick up on a 3 plus. You've also got the jump up angle. If you're running the troll and you're likely to be throwing goblins, then jump up will allow you to create a throw teammate blitzer. You just throw that goblin into the other side of the pitch. You've kicked the ball away. Your opponent's got the ball somewhere. Chuck a goblin over there. That goblin is going to three plus stunty dodge around and harass the ball carrier. 40k for a goblin lineman. 50 plus K for the majority of players in Blood Bowl. Most of them are significantly more than that. And your TVOP is going to benefit because your team value on pitch, if a goblin is tying up somebody who's 60, 70, 80K, you have made a net gain there. And because you've got Snotlings, you've also got the player advantage as well because your TVOP is going to be higher. So every Snotling and every goblin that you can use to distract a player of equal or greater value is going to benefit your team and your choices. Monstrous Mouth, we'll mention again. So doubles that are really useful, Wrestle, Dauntless, and you can actually just save up 12 SPP and take Guard because a 3 plus stunty Guard player is going to be awesome as well. And Armor 8 plus, Goblins are going to survive. It is up to you where you go with Goblin Lyman. If you get 3 SPP and you want to take a random mutation, there's a really good chance you're going to end up with something useful. Even Disturbing Presence will be really useful. Foul Appearance could be still very, very useful. I think there's only a couple that wouldn't be great. Very Long Legs aren't, isn't going to be great. Tentacles isn't going to be great. Uh, Iron Hard Skin isn't going to be great. And Claws you're going to struggle with. That's 4 out of 12. That means you've got 8 skills that could be good for you. So that's 2 thirds of a chance. That's the gamble at 3 SPP. We wait till 6 and you choose one or you take a random general. There's a ton of stuff. And honestly, just running a team of goblin linemen is going to give you so much satisfaction because they are going to develop themselves. And this underworld team is so exciting. You've got the gutter, you've got the blitzer, you've got the thrower. Those are three really good players. Those are some of the best players in the game and you've already got them. On top of that, this team is barely controlled chaos of underdogs that are going to develop themselves. And you're your underworld team at game 12 is going to look very different than somebody else's underworld team at game 12 and it is going to be so much fun and these guys are just going to make it even more fun so underworld snotlings you can take 0 to 6 i think 0 to 6 at 15,000 apiece movement 5 strength 1 agility 3 plus passing 5 plus armor 6 plus dodge right stuff sidestep stunty swarming titchy you want to take these guys, you want to take at least a couple of these guys because you get to deploy 12, 13, 14 players on the pitch. Those spare snotlings are going to be able to enable your B 
big guys and just be an extra assist somewhere or an extra foul somewhere for 15k. Now, if somehow they get enough SP to, line, to, to level up, six, do what we did with the goblin, take a random general. Three, for these guys, take a random mutation. It's just going to be great fun. They're 15k. This team doesn't have low cost linemen, so they actually do add to your TV. So adding skills is going to make them more expensive, but they're not going to last long. <laughs> but uh, if you take a random roll and end up with a 25k horn snotling, uh, it's just going to be great fun. Like, don't even think about it. I suppose technically the right thing to do is just hoard SPP and then fire them. But you're going to find it way more enjoyable to just get to 3 SPP somehow, take a random mutation, and then when it dies, buy another one. Because you can take up to 6. I love this. I think it adds a load of character. And um, these guys just add that extra extra element. You've got the Rat Ogre now. You've got the Gutter Runner now. And you can take some Snotlings. And it really just gives you an excuse to buy um, another Snotling team. Because just so much fun to be had anyway guys i'm going to wrap up the underworld team development there are so many teams i want to run in league and underworld have got to be in, in my my shortlist because your team is going to end up being so unique to you you're going to build some characters uh, i do recommend the whole angle of only naming your guys when they get level up it just gives you the opportunity to name them something that they've done special um, because those are the players you're going to remember because those are the players who are going to develop into your own little stars and that is just what blood bowl is all about Anyway, I'm going to wrap up. Let me know in the comments what you think of Underworld and Blah Blah 2020. And if you are as excited as I am, because I think they're going to be absolutely great fun. I'm going to disappear and we'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Have a good day. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.